hi my Gemini viewers. I'm going to look into your situation, um, see what your person is thinking, feeling, what steps, actions they might be taking towards you over the next couple weeks or so. So the last reading I did, I was getting that you had at least one or two secret admirers that were wanting to come forward. You had a very deep spiritual bond with somebody, possibly even a twin flame bond, or at the very least a soulmate. And um, they were wanting to talk to you more, but they were just kind of insecure about it. Like they thought maybe they weren't your type, or maybe you had an ex that was coming back in the picture and they were getting jealous. They just weren't really sure what to do. So let's see what's going on with your love life now. So again, this is... Um, I know I have some male viewers, so male or female, this could be male-male relationship, female-female relationship, male-female, however it plays out for you. Um, you know, I usually say the divine masculine, but if, if you're a man watching this and you're in a male-female relationship, then it, it could be your feminine. It's just however the energy plays out, so just take it how it resonates with you. Don't get too caught up on, um, on wording. All right, so what's going on with your relationship right now? What's going on with you? What do we need to know? Actually, I'm going to pull from this deck first, I think. Okay, so Gemini viewers, what is going on? With your love life right now. What do we need to know about your love life? Okay, let's see what's going on. Eight of Pentacles, Four of Wands, the High Priestess. So you're really coming into your power right now. I feel. I think you're a magnet for love right now. I think that like I think a lot of people are attracted to you right now. I still feel that energy that you have at least one or two potential love interests around you that are really noticing you right now. So Ace of Wands, the Lovers, Seven of Wands. Seven of Cups and the Hierophant. Okay. Let's see what this card is. Prophetic Dream. Yeah, I just kept being drawn to, to pick that one up. So lucid dreaming and astral travel and also, you know, dream communication, like telepathic communication through dreams between you and this person. And um, maybe having dreams about them. Maybe they're coming to you in your dreams. Um, you guys are entering each, other dream, each other's dreams or maybe you're just having dreams about... You know, just, just romantic dreams, just having that feeling that your person is is close to making a move. So when I started pulling cards, the song Where Do You Go, My Lovely from the Night at the Rocks Paris soundtrack started playing in my head. Um, and I just looked at the lyrics. It's kind of a, if you want to look at the song and see if it resonates, but it's basically somebody who's heartbroken over a woman and He's not really, he's waiting for her to come to him and he's not really going to her. It's someone that's like sad and emotional, but it's like they're still not coming forward. They're just expecting you to psychically know what they feel or to reach out to them first. So it's kind of an interesting group. Let me see what I can get from these cards though. Look at, the, at these cards. I also feel like you have something to be proud of yourself for. Like you might be going through some kind of ascension process. Um, maybe like a recent purging process, but it's like your psychic abilities are increasing right now. So with the Eight of Pentacles, and this could also be like a career or hobby or something that you've been working towards. It's not necessarily, for a lot of you, I feel like it's like the ascension process, but for some of you, it could just be, you know, a new job or a career or, or hobbies or, you know, graduating school or something of that sort, you know, so take it how it resonates. But with the Eight of Pentacles, it's like something that you had to be patient with. It's a process or or something that you had to be really patient with yourself on. And, you know, you were mastering these new skills. You were studying. You were focusing on being the best version of yourself. And with the Four of Wands here, I feel like you kind of got to that point, you know. This is celebration. This is peace. This is reaching that next chapter of your life. This is, you know, a good environment. So it's like you're going through, you just went through this transition. I feel like you're coming near the end of the transition or you're in the middle of it at the very least. Um... 
it just feels like a leveling up you know it really feels like a leveling up because it's like you have this this stability and this this good environment around you this is this is about like you're celebrating something you're celebrating yourself you're celebrating this transition whether this was a move or a new job or just the ascension process and you're coming into your psychic gifts more than ever it's there's something here to celebrate and you're in this high priestess energy which is very you know to me like looking at that with the, the other cards here i'm looking at this reading it's like she's very powerful and strong and seductive and you know queen like um and if you think about it with with you know magic and psychic work the high priestess would be you know, someone that the community goes to for help, somebody that people rely on, somebody who's completely in tune with their psychic gifts and their spiritual side. It's just, it's intuition and it's just, you know, she's knowledgeable, she's, she's aware, she's, it's just this pure, strong, feminine energy um, that you've, you've gotten yourself into, that you're, um, you're, you're, drawing love to you right now too in a romantic sense i think that the, the people around you that are noticing you are really noticing this energy about you they notice how spiritual and strong you are they notice that like that feminine energy it's like you're very soft and open but very strong at the same time and the people around you yeah they're just really noticing you right now they're they're kind of i see one or two people around you that are just kind of watching you it's like if it's somebody that you live with or somebody that you see on a daily basis, it's kind of like they're watching, they're really observant with you right now. Like they're watching your body language, they're watching your mannerisms, the things you say, the things you do. Like I think that the things that you say around them or to them kind of stick in their head. Like they like the way that you speak. It's like you say things, I don't know. I don't know if it's like you're funny or you're just intelligent, but there's just something about the way that you talk that they really love and that really just sticks in their head and makes them there's something that you're just you say that like kind of gets sticks in their head like they really think about your words um it could be passwords too it could be somebody thinking about things that you've said to them in the past or text messages that you sent them in the past um it could also be someone kind of stalking you on social media somebody might be noticing the things that you say and do on social media like the posts that you make they're just, there's just, they set you apart from the rest, I think is what it comes down to. Like this person is, is very scared of losing you. Like they know that they're not going to find somebody else like you out there. They know that you're unique. Like you're, you're funny and intelligent and spiritual and you, you know, you're the best of both worlds to them. And they know that they can't get that with just any person. And they know that if they let you go, it's going to be a huge mistake. So for some of you, because I was getting before this energy of this ex coming back around. So for some of you, it could be an ex coming back around. For a lot of you, I think it's just somebody around you that is just kind of, maybe they messed up in the past or maybe they like you, but they've just never said anything about it. And they're kind of aware that, you know, you might meet somebody else or you might not want them. And they're, they're, they have some anxiety, you know, they have some anxiety that if they don't step up soon, they're going to lose you. You know, see, this man here has this, he has this desire to come towards his high priestess. You know, he feels like she's the key that could unlock everything for him. Um, this is, hmm, I'm trying to think of, it's interesting energy, so I'm trying to figure out what to make of it. It's almost like you give him or her, however it plays out for you, you know, whatever role you guys are in. Um, it's almost like you give this person energy and inspiration and it's like you kind of motivate them but they're not as high energy as you like this person right here is kind of more low energy than you are but you know when you see he's looking at her but she's kind of looking for it she's more like she's just manifesting love she might be holding space for this person but she's not waiting the way that she used to for him um she's just looking forward and with the lovers here though you do have options you do have somebody you'd have one or two people coming in i do still feel that Okay, so looking at this reading, because I do feel like, I feel like this might be the X for a lot of you that's coming back around, but I don't know if you're going to choose them, because you see, you do have this special bond here, you know, there is this love here, there is this connection here. Um, I'm going to pull some more cards, because I do still feel two energies, I feel like there's two men or two women that are watching you and observing you right now, I feel like there's one or two, like, I feel like you're in this high priestess energy, so you're really attractive to, um, 
potential suitors right now. Like they're really, I sense people really, you know, listening to what you're saying right now and really observing what you're saying and doing and really taking you seriously right now and seeing you in a light that do they just see you as very powerful right now. They, they're, they're, they've already seen that. I mean, the last reading we did, they were on that energy where they admired you, but it's like whatever, for whatever reason, they admire you even more now than they did a month ago. But with the Son of Wands and the Son of Cups here, ugh, I see with the Son of Wands, it's like competition. It's a struggle. It's a power struggle. It's, you know, a third party situation. It's having to defend yourself. It's being in arguments with somebody. It's, you know, see, she can't really relax around this person. It's like she has to defend herself. She can't really just be open. And with the Seven of Cups, it's like you've got to make a choice. It's like you want to get out of this. This is like a very dreamy, imaginative um, energy, but it's like she wants to get out of that energy. She doesn't want to keep dreaming. She wants to make these choices. She wants to decide who is right for her and who isn't. It's, you know, it's fear. It's illusion. It's, you know, having to make, having to go inward and make a choice and see. So that's why I think for a lot of you, maybe an ex is going to message you or reach out to you somehow. But I'm going to look into the, the new person next because I don't want to stay focused on the ex too much because I feel like the new per I feel like the other people around you that are watching you, and it may not, not, might not be a new person in a sense that they're actually new. It just be somebody that's been around you that's liked you for a while that hasn't come forward with their feelings. But I want to look into that person more than the ex because I feel like their their energy is much better than this energy. Um, but this is the ex I feel for you guys. And yeah, with the Son of Wands, it's like, she can't be herself with this person. She has to, you know what I mean? Like this person hurts her feelings, this person, or she has to compete with other women for this person. You know, it's like something, there's just something off here. It's like, she just can't be her true self. And she's realizing that. And she's realizing she's been dreaming for so long and she needs to be, you know, she needs to be honest with herself about if this person is actually right for her or not. Cause she doesn't want to be in the Sun of Wands energy again. And with the Hierophant here, I kind of feel like you end up choosing yourself. You end up choosing the High Priestess energy to stay in this energy, to focus on your spiritual path and your spiritual work and your psychic work. Um, and, you know, hobbies, career, just the things that make you happy. You're, you're choosing to focus on, you know, this can be like social groups or institutions. It could be it's, it's guidance from a higher power. You're, you're focusing on, you're letting your guides kind of guide you. You're letting things flow. You're not holding on to this ex energy anymore and demanding that this be your person. You're, you're open to love coming in a different form now, I think. You know, like you want true love, even if it's not what the person you thought it was going to be with. So let me see what I can get with the new energy, though, because I don't want to focus too much on just that one energy, you know? Okay, so show me the new, so the other people, there's one or two other people around you that are, besides the ex, there's one or two other people around you noticing you. But can you show me the energy of these other people? Can you show me what they're about? Show me this energy. I don't want to know about this. So we have individuality, self-worth, strength, and cycles. I almost want to say that, well, I think there might be two energies observing you. I think that the good energy, this energy that I feel, is probably the better option for you. This is the one that's like observing you and really taking you seriously and listening to you. And like, they just admire you a lot. Like they think very highly of you. They think highly of what you say. Your words stick in their heads. Um, I think with the ex too, they are thinking about things you said in the past and they are nostalgic and missing you, but I think it's, it's more, I mean, they're both observing you, you know what I mean? Like both these energies are observing you. Both of them are interested in what you have to say, but this good energy is, uh, is more observant, you know, the ex is mostly kind of living in the past and thinking about the things you said in the past, but I don't feel like they're particularly mindful or particularly listening to you now. Like they might stalk you on social media, but it's just like, they're not, there's still miscommunication there. There's still a lack of connection there. You know what I mean? There's still just something that's going to pre prevent that from moving forward, I think. But this other person thinks a lot more highly of you than the ex does. You know, this other person is, is more on your page and on your level. 
Um, could be someone in their early to mid 30s because I see all the, the 30s here. We've got 32, 35, 37. Um, you know, with individuality and self worth, it's like they just they set you apart. They realize you're different than the rest. They realize they're not going to find anybody else like you. They value you a lot. And they're trying to be strong for you, but I think that they realize they might be aware of your ex. They could be aware that your ex is around or your ex is wanting to come back. Or they're, maybe you're not over your ex. Maybe that's what it is. There's some kind of cycle that you're in. And they're, they're just, they have this awareness that you haven't broken that cycle. You know, so this could also be somebody who's not your usual type who likes you. And they're aware that you have a certain type. And so they're not coming forward because they're like, well, I don't think that he or she would want someone like me. I don't know why they would date someone like me. And I know it's frustrating for you guys because I know we were in very similar energy, um, a month ago when I did this reading, this person was still admiring you. This person was still around you. About a month ago, they were they were watching you. They were wanting to come forward. And they were just, you know, again, just kind of fighting themselves. And I feel like their feelings have grown, grown deeper for you. I do feel like their feelings are stronger for you. They are admiring you even more than they were before. They are... They are really scared. They're getting more, the anxiety I feel from them is stronger. Like they are getting more afraid of losing you. They're afraid that if they don't step up soon, they're going to lose you. But I, I don't think that they have stepped up. Or if they have, they've kind of said the bare minimum. And maybe you didn't understand that they were trying to flirt with you. Like maybe there was like some miscommunication or something. Because um, it's like they want to drop hints, but it's like they drop such subtle hints that I don't think you get it. I don't think, I don't know if you are like are fully aware of it. Or they might say things here and there, but it's like they're not saying they're not doing enough. They need to do more. They can't just drop hints. They can't just like your posts. You know what I mean? Like they need to do more than that. So yeah, it's like they're trying to be strong for you. They're trying to, they're trying not to let their fear get the best of them. They're trying to be strong and come forward. But with, with cycles here, it's like they feel like, yeah, they feel like they're not, they're not your type or they feel like you're in a cycle. They feel like there's a block. I think that I think that's what it is. They might be aware of, like I said, they might be aware of the X, or they might just feel like you have a certain pattern with men or women, or like you're maybe like you're in a cycle, like you're really busy right now, or you're too busy for them, or you just have something going on that makes them feel like you wouldn't want whatever it is. However, that resonates with you, they feel like you've got something on that would make you not want to date them right now. So they're not being very forward about their feelings. Let's see what I can get. Let's see what else I can get. Um, remember, remember, guys, just take what resonates, leave what doesn't, because, you know, I channel a whole group of people when I do these readings. And so, yes, I am channeling you. If you're drawn to this and this is resonating, then it means I am connecting with you. I am channeling you. But remember, I'm channeling other people, too. It's like it's a small group of people that I'm channeling that are drawn to these videos. So, you know, if I say, hey, like, I think your ex's name is Rebecca or I think there is a Rebecca around that's for one specific person. I don't want you to comment and be like, oh, I'm not Rebecca. So, you know, this, that you were wrong. This isn't my reading, you know, because it's, it's just very disrespectful when I get comments like that. Because again, there's going to be little specific things that I'm going to probably channel for specific people that are watching this. But in general, I'm channeling a whole group of people. So, so yes, you are, you are here. You are being channeled if you feel like this is your story. But again, just take what resonates leave what doesn't. If there's one little message that I have for a specific person and you don't resonate with it, just it's their message, you know? There might be certain messages that come through that are just for one specific person. Just just leave that be and just take what resonates with you. As long as the majority of it resonates with you, like 80 to 90 percent, then it should be your story. So let's see what else we can get about these people. Because I see you might even have three people around you, actually. You might have an ex and then because again you're in the high priestess energy so that's a very she's very feminine she's very powerful she's very seductive and nurturing and loving like she's got the best of both, both worlds going on so it's it's not surprising that you're so attractive to people right now you're probably going to have friends coming to you too asking for help and guidance because you just have you're radiating this this empathy and this energy right now and you're, you're going through a lot of you are going through an ascension process and you're just really drawing in people and you know you're gonna your light will attract moths sometimes you know you're gonna draw in both good and bad people so you got to kind of pick and choose and be careful with your energy 
but I do I do feel the X wanting to come back around and I do also feel feel like the X came back around or is about to possibly but it's like I don't think you're gonna want it you know what I mean like I think you're gonna I think if, if you do have this X I feel like you're gonna get excited about it at first and then you're gonna be like oh wait this is the same shit it was before and you're going to realize it's not for you and that you can't be in, be in the high priestess energy and be with somebody who's such a psychic vampire or so toxic and negative. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to want it. But I do think you have a couple other people on top of the ex that are watching you and wanting to get to know you better and are getting to know you better. They're just, again, they just hesitate to come forward. But let's see. Okay, so I don't want to look into the ex because we know... Like you, and this, if this is your story, then you know the X is not good for you. Like you would have an awareness of that if this is your story, you know what I mean? So, let's see. So you have sexual energy here, telepathic sexual thoughts. So you might be connecting with this person through that too. So let's, let's look into this. I, so I want to look into the, the one or two people that are admiring you that are actually good choices for you. Show me what's going on with them. I don't want to look into the ex. Do not want to, do not want to see that. You don't need to see all that. Let's just look into the, the secret admirers that you guys have here. What do we need to know about that? I don't know about that. Okay. Time to rest, shield, uh, healing, grounding, telepathic communication, past life, twin flame. See, I think this person, I think that this person that's coming in or that already is, again, they might already be around you and just not feel like they're your type or they just don't know how to talk to you. And it's 444 four, four right now. Um, that's an angel number. Um, anyway, so this person, I feel like they might be like your your person. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like this might be your right person. It's like the last person that you're this ex that might be coming back around. It's like you thought that was your person. Like you thought that was your true love. You thought that was it for you. And then you kind of started realizing, you know, the more and more, the more you get into that high priestess energy, the more you realize that's not actually your person. That's not actually what you want. So, but yeah, as I was saying all that, I heard car, cars rubber, rubbing up their engines outside. And I swear, every time I hear that, I would just want to yell. It's not going to make it any bigger. I have to, like, stop myself from yelling and then at them. So I think it was, like, kind of, like, synchronicity, though. It was kind of, like, a metaphoric message where it's, like, your mask healing was all talk. Like, he thought he was big and bad, and he, and he thought he was the one for you. But he, he's all talk. He's not tough. He's just rubbing up his engine. You know what I mean? He just got a big ego. Um, and I think you're kind of realizing that more and more. I think that you're nostalgic at times and you miss the past. But at the same time, I think you're kind of like, eh. Like, the more you get into this new energy, and I think it's scary for you at times. But the more you get into it, the more you're, like, not miss. You know, the more you're letting go of the past. You know what I mean? The more you're getting in tune with this other person that's, that's actually right for you. So I think and a lot of times people meet the, like, the false twin flame or the you know, whoever before they meet the actual person they're meant to be with. And some people are meant to be with soulmates, so it's not always, you know what I mean? Like, you're not always meant to be with your twin flame. Sometimes you're meant to be with a soulmate, but it's like you're, you're meeting your person, you know? It's like the one. However that plays out for you, whether it's a twin flame or soulmate, it doesn't matter. It's just your person. It's the person who gets you, who you get back, you know? If you are on a psychic path, I think you might be channeling too much right now because this, this time to rest and running on empty, it's like a busy schedule. So this could be a work schedule. This could be just doing a lot right now. And especially if you're in the high priestess energy, it makes sense that people are probably coming to you and venting to you about their problems. And they're, whatever it is, you just, however it resonates, it's like you just kind of have this desire to retreat and just rest and heal. You know, you're just tired. And it's saying here that you want to shield you know, this could be fire magic too for some of you. This could be actual like like defensive magic. For, for a lot of you, I think it's just saying like bubble yourself, you know, put yourself in a little bubble. Imagine light all around you and, and just bubble yourself and shield from anyone or anything that's trying to to drag you down and, and claim your energy. Shield from the psychic vampires, shield from anything that's just overbearing right now. 
with spirits of the living, you have a strong, deep telepathic bond with somebody, a very deep psychic bond. So this is the same energy I was getting in the last reading too, where it was just this like very spiritual bond. It was like this very, there's probably a telepathic sexual connection too. I think that you guys, I think that there's something going on with like sex magic where you guys think about each other and do that maybe at the same time and you're not even aware of it. With spirits of the living, it's just it's just all about telepathic communication. With the healing card, I would say, I mean, that's about shadow work. It's also about you healing the connection with your ex. You know what I mean? You're kind of like, you have to let that go if it's not serving you any longer, if it's just hurting you. But you know deep down it's not your person. It's kind of like it's kind of like you've got to let go of the familiar. You know what I mean? It's like you're you're transitioning and you're getting into this high priestess mode, and part of you is almost like, oh my god, I'm too high up. I'm this is like I'm ascending so quickly. Or like I'm, I'm, you know, you might be having these like psychic downloads and you feel like you're going crazy at times because you're not used to it. But it's it's saying like own your power, own your spirit, own who you are, like be who you are. Claim that, you know what I mean? Claim that high priestess energy. Don't be afraid of it. You've deserved this. You you earn this. It's time for you to be in that energy. It's okay to be in that energy. Um, it's okay to, to claim and embrace your power now, you know? And, you know, the healing card that I made, it says the path to wholeness requires introspection, honesty, and vulnerability. So really do the healing work. Do the shadow work. Do what you need to let do to let go of the ex and anyone or anything that's holding you back and making you feel like you don't deserve this power and this beautiful feminine energy that you've earned. You know what I mean? Like you deserve to be the person that you've worked so hard to be. Like you're finally there. You're finally that person. So claim it, own it. Um, and with grounding, it's saying, you know, the energy and freedom you seek will be found in nature. So if you can do, you know, there's a shielding and grounding. So it's kind of, I think you're channeling a lot. And if you are a new psychic, like if you're just coming into your ability, it might be saying like you got to remember to shield and ground. Like when you go in, when you go into the astral realm or when you channel, you might not even be aware that you're channeling. You might just have these downloads and you're not sure what they are. But but it's, it's saying that whatever whatever your story is, it's like you, your psychic ability. You are channeling. You are coming into the psychic ability. So shield, protect yourself. You know, there's a lot of things in the astral realm that you have to be aware of. So you gotta you gotta bubble yourself and shield. And especially with psychic vampires, like being an empath, you really have to shield and protect yourself and you have to ground, you know, be out in nature, go go to the beach or the woods or wherever and just, just take your shoes off and just ground and connect with nature um, and make sure you're not overdoing it with the psychic work and the ascension. Make sure you, you have, I mean, it's coming in quick, but it's like you got to, you need to protect yourself and have that balance to and shield and ground. Shielding and grounding. If you don't know the techniques, just just Google them, look them up. It shouldn't be too hard to, to find the ones that resonate with you. But anyway, with this person, I feel like grounding too. Like I feel like being out in nature, I almost feel like you might be more open and you might be able to telepathically connect with this person even deeper. So there is a very strong psychic bond here, like I said. It's just a matter of really getting out of your comfort zone. With past life here, I think that you're... I think that both of you are having more and more past life memories come up. You're realizing, maybe recognizing your soul group, maybe recognizing your connection with each other. Um, possibly even mirroring each other or exchanging energy through the chakras, like chakra connections here. This is just, this is just a very strong, deep spiritual bond. Again, it doesn't matter if it's twin flame or soulmate. It's mostly just about, it's mostly just trying to say like this is your person, whatever the connection is. It's just saying like you thought the ex was your person, but you're realizing it's not now. You're realizing that maybe you need to break that pattern you used to have, and you know you want true love. You want a soul connection. You don't want just familiarity. Let me see if I can get anything else on this connection. Okay, mutual dream meditation and dragon spirit. Put these. So again, a very deep telepathic bond here. You guys might be showing up in each other's dreams. 
um, something with lucid dreaming. It's just, it's somebody that's dreaming of you. You're showing up in their dreams. They might be showing up in your dreams. Maybe like you guys might be meeting in the astral realm when you sleep. You are psychic. This group is psychic. So you are coming into these psychic abilities um, more and more. Meditation, peace, clarity, effortless flow, soul exploration, and free spiritedness. You know, you're getting into this energy like meditating and, and really ground again, again, shielding and grounding yourself and just letting things flow to you and just letting go of the control issues and just letting this connection happen and just letting go of, you know, the thoughts of, oh, the ex was supposed to be the one or I went through all this with my ex. I don't want to do it for somebody else. And just, just letting go of holding on to the familiar, letting go of holding on to the toxic patterns. With dragon spirit, you have somebody here who it could actually be a dragon soul. Um, they could actually have like that, that could be their soul, but it's also about strength and courage and choosing love and passion over fear because, you know, you are going to be afraid when this connection comes in. It is going to be different. It is going to shake you to your core. It is going to challenge you to step out of your comfort zone. Um, and this could just be, this could be a man or a woman that's just very protective of you. They're very strong, very confident, very courageous. They're very protective of you. They always want to make sure you're safe. And it makes sense with the energy I was getting before where it's like they're aware of your ex or they a lot of them might be, not all of them, but a lot of them are aware that you're in a cycle. So whatever that cycle is, whether it's with your ex or it's just a pattern you have with people, there's something that makes them scared to come forward because they think that you're not ready for them or that they wouldn't be your type or they just, there's some kind of insecurity where they feel, where they're observing you and they're feeling like for some reason you wouldn't want them basically is what's going on. But this person is very protective of you. So even if they're not speaking to you all the time, they are they are sending you healing energy. They are trying to protect you. They do want the best for you. Um, and this is, again, this is a much better person to be with in the ex. So it's ultimately up to you what you want to do. Let me see if I can, because I don't want to just like leave you guys with that. You know what I mean? Because I know how frustrating it is when you're waiting for somebody and you're they're just kind of not making a move. You're like, all right, this is awesome. My person is finally here, but where the fuck are they? Like, really? Really? Like you're right here and you're not gonna you're not gonna make a move on me yet. Like you're you're gonna <laughs> I think that they just need to if you know who this is, it's almost like they just need reassurance before they reach out. You know what I mean? It's like they want to, but they're just whatever it is, whatever cycle you're in, they're just watching you in that cycle. And they're like, yeah, this person wouldn't want me. This person's not ready for me. And so that needs to be addressed is the main thing before they come forward. Like they need that to be addressed because if it's somebody that's friends with you, they're not going to want to come forward and ruin that friendship, you know? Or if it's somebody that like doesn't talk to you much, but maybe is on your social media or somebody that like from the past it's like they just they want more certainty before they come forward and they don't feel like they have that certainty right now sage so uncrossing um clearing work let me see what this is trying to tell me I almost feel like it's telling you you need to do like uncrossing and like healing work and like letting go of the past and maybe do some road opening work because so it's like you have nightmares here it's just like this is like deep regret it's it's like a chaotic mental state it's fear and anxiety and it's like you got to let go of the control issues and the fear and the anxiety and all that kind of energy you know because this person does think you're a sacred woman they do see you as or him or her they see you as different and this should this should manifest in the physical realm once you just give them that reassurance and you do the uncrossing work and road opening, like just clear the path between you guys, basically, I think is what it's trying to say. So we'll, we'll see where we're at in a couple weeks. If this resonates, please go ahead and subscribe and comment below. Thank you guys.